God always does more than we ask for, more than we desire, more than we expect, more than he promises. Don't you love that? He is able to do exceeding abundantly above. But not just that. John 10 says we would have life and not just life, but that much more abundantly. So everything God does always goes the extra mile. Could this be why Jesus says if someone asks you to walk a mile, walk two? Is Jesus just telling you that's what I do anyway? That that's what the Father does and everything I see the Father do? Jesus says that's what I do? Desire is not enough. Desire is not enough. Sean Isaacs here. Welcome to another day of Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. Desire. What is desire? What does desire mean to you? How important is desire? You know, there are hopefully many things in your life that you desire to change. There's some things you'd like to add to your life, right? There's changes you'd like to make. That's a good thing, right? I think... If there's one weakness, there's many weaknesses, but if there's a weakness in, in many people that I've seen, especially in the last two or three generations, it is a lack of clarity and desire. Lack of desire for what people want, what they want to accomplish. Many of you know I get to work with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs. And one of the questions I tend to ask someone who is in a challenge in their business is I want to know what their vision looks like. What is their desire? What do they want to accomplish? And so I'll ask questions like, what do you want to accomplish in the next three to five years? What do you want to see happen in your business in the next three months? The next, I'm sorry, 12 months, right? One of my favorite beginning questions is, you know, most people that I meet with are in one of three places, right? Number one, their business is declining. Number two, their business is stagnant. Number three, their business is growing. And I got to tell you, I have had this conversation with hundreds and other conversations with thousands of people, thousands of business owners over the years. And it continues to shock me that someone would be looking for a way to grow their business, for a way to, to advertise and expand what they have already, but they have no clarity on what they really want. There's no real desire. They've never really taken time to figure out what they really want. Same thing. You could sit down with a couple in relation to marriage issues, parental problems, yeah. health issues. Doesn't matter what it is, right? And one of the things that we have a tendency to lack is desire. But guess what? As vital and as important and as critical as desire is... Desire is not enough. Those of you that know me probably have heard a little bit about my story. And it is that many, many years ago, I started a small building materials company with about $8,000. First year, I did $1.2 million in sales on an island of about 25,000 people, right, population. Three competitors that had been, had been in business for more than 30 years. So those the businesses were older than I was, right? God blessed that business, gave me wisdom and favor, right? It says about Jesus in Luke chapter 2 that he grew in stature and wisdom and favor with God and man. And that's what happened in my life. First year, 1.2 million in sales. Small island, that is considered, you know, here where I live now, that would be $20 million, 25, 30 million, right? Based on population. But by year three, I had to close that business and it put my family $100,000 in debt. And I made a commitment to God after that. It didn't happen quickly, right? I'm just summarizing the story for you. I made a commitment that I would read a proverb a day. And for the last 20 years or so, I've read a proverb almost every day. And so today I get to Proverbs 13 because I'm one day behind, 
right? Yesterday, I only, I usually, part of my practice is I try to read about 10 chapters of the Bible every day. Yesterday, I read five. So I didn't get to my proverb for the day. So today, in my reading this morning, in my devotion, and by the way, I start my day very early, usually around 5 a.m., right? And I'm not saying that to boast or saying that that's virtuous in any way, but if you are one of those people that you're continually saying to yourself, I need more time, I need more of me, and all of these other things that we tend to say to ourselves and to others, then maybe you need to start a little bit earlier so you'll get more done. Okay? That's neither here nor there. Actually, it does relate to what I'm sharing. So, Proverbs 13, I get to verse 4. And it says this, The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing. The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing. Now I spent all of that time emphasizing how important desire is. And there are some people that need to hear for 15, 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, that one of the things you lack is your desires are too small. You have no desires, right? Like yesterday, I talked about Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Right, And so maybe you have to broaden your thinking. You have to have, a, have bigger desires to see God do greater things in your life. But desire is still not enough. There are a lot of Christians that have desires. A lot of God's people have desires. How do we know? Because they have vision. They write things down. They pray. They have certain things they want to see accomplished. But Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived next to Jesus the Christ, says, By the Holy Spirit... The soul of the sluggard, or the lazy person, desires and have nothing. The lazy person desires to have a good marriage. The lazy person desires to have better trained children, for a lack of a better way to say it. I want to have, you know, my children are so this, and my children are so that. And you desire to see change. But desire is not enough. Right? The soul of the sluggard. Solomon says, desireth to be healthy, but has nothing. You can desire all you want, you can pray, you can declare, you could bind and loose, as many do. And yet Solomon says, desire is not enough. The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Don't you love that? The idea here is that those who are diligent will not just have enough. They will have more than enough. I love the fact that if you study this idea through the scriptures, God always does more than we ask for, more than we desire, more than we expect, more than he promises. Don't you love that? He is able to do exceeding abundantly above. But not just that. John 10 says we would have life and not just life, but that much more abundantly. So everything God does always goes the extra mile. Could this be why Jesus says, if someone asks you to walk a mile, walk two? Is Jesus just telling you that's what I do anyway? That that's what the Father does and everything I see the Father do? Jesus says, that's what I do? So desire is not enough. You can have the desire. It's important to cultivate desire. It's important to reinforce the desire. But desire is not enough. You have to put legs to that desire. You have to work. And so the Holy Spirit through Solomon says, the, 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 the desire of the slothful, I have to quote the whole thing, I, all right? Because it's in my head. The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent, the soul of the diligent should be made fat. This is one of those words I don't think we hear enough about. We don't hear proclaimed enough. But if you, I would challenge and encourage you to take out your concordance online. Look up the word diligent, diligence, diligently. Just look up those words and, 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 and other variations of it. And you'll see it's connected to everything, right? We're told to be diligent to add to our faith. Virtue, the virtue, knowledge, and it gives you this list. In 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1 verse 10 says we're to be diligent to make our calling and election sure. Right? You can't be passive. In Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about maturing and going on to perfection. 
And you can't do that without diligence. And so you have, you could desire, I want to be more spiritual. I want to know the Bible more. I want to be more healthy. I want to be more prosperous financially. I want to get out of debt. Desire is not enough. Desire is good. It's just not enough. What we have to do is we have to put feet to our desire. And so Solomon says, the desire of the diligent, the soul of the diligent, shall be made fat. Don't you love that? That Solomon is not just thinking about financial prosperity. He's not just thinking about material possessions. Not that those are bad things. Those are great things. Solomon says money answers all things. That's Ecclesiastes 10. But Solomon understands in the big scheme of things, like John, the apostle, the one that Jesus loved, who says in 3 John 2, right? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as what? Even as your soul prospers. See, when you get the soul right, and the soul represents all that we are, will, mind, intellect, soul. The Bible says the soul that sins should surely die. God created Adam in Genesis 1, and Adam, he breathed into man, and man became a what? A living soul. I know there's teachers that tell you that we became a living spirit. No, God is spirit. John 4, right? God is spirit. He doesn't have a body like men. That's a spirit. I know. You want to argue. Don't argue with me now. We can do that debate another time. The Bible says, the soul that sins shall surely die. Here, Solomon says... It's not enough to have desire. What you got to do is you got to get out of, and it's, listen, let me, I'll be the first to admit, in this season that we're in, it's easy to be distracted. It's easy to be discouraged. It's easy to become demotivated. You don't feel like working. You don't feel like doing stuff. But it is the soul of the diligent that's going to get the reward. It is the diligent person that's going to that's going to win the battle. It's the diligent person that when we come through this crisis, that's going to be on the other side, and they're going to experience prosperity in all areas of their life. See, the ability to make yourself do what you don't want to do or feel like doing is one of the basic definitions of discipline. The ability to make yourself do what you don't feel like doing or want to do is how you know what diligence and discipline looks like. And it's one of the hardest things to develop. So in order to develop discipline, we have to first conquer slothfulness. We have to conquer slothfulness. And then we can add diligence to our life. So it's not enough to desire. Praise God for all the encouragement and the inspirational videos and the podcast and, and the YouTube videos and all these things that inspire but if it's not helping you to take action, you and I become a hero of the words, but not doers of the words. So I encourage you to get up off the couch, get up off the bed, stop desiring, stop praying about it, stop willing, stop, um, stop, uh, what do we do when we, what do we, what do people do? Stop making resolves, right? Resolutions, stop resolving to bring change or to see change or to have change and embrace the words of James who says, show me your faith without your works, I'll show you faith by my works. Embrace the words of Solomon. They have the same teacher. Solomon says, the soul of the sluggard or the lazy person desires and yet has nothing, right? By the way, we don't tend to factor that in when we're thinking about the poor and the factor that in when we're thinking about the poor and needy. We love to blame everything and everyone else. We want to blame the rich, right? The rich is why the poor is poor. I want to tell you, there's more than enough in America for every one of its 300 plus million citizens. There's more than enough. There's more than enough resources, more than enough opportunities. There's nothing or no one in your way, but your own limiting beliefs, your own thinking. The soul of the of the slothful desires, has it, but has nothing. You know what's profound about that, even humbling, is you could be a king's kid. You could believe you're the head and not the tail. You could believe that 
uh, that the blessings of the Lord makes you rich and add no sorrow. You can have all this theory in your head that you believe, even in the heart, but without diligence. If you don't have diligence, you don't have results. And what is diligence? Diligence is to work. So it's great homework. If you've never really looked up the word diligence and research it, I'm not talking just about basic definitions. I'm talking about Bible definitions. If you want a basic dictionary and you don't have a Bible dictionary, take look for Webster's 1828 dictionary before they kept updating it and updating it and taking God out of it. 1828 version. Webster, Daniel Webster, was a born-again believer, a lover of God. Some of the best stuff that's been produced in the history of America and of the world have been produced by Judy, uh, uh, Ju uh, the Jew, by, I was going to say by a, a Judeo and Christian ethic, by Jew Jews and Christians. And it's not a coincidence. Not a coincidence. Anyway, that's my thought for today. I am home and uh, I'm trying to do these on my way home so I could be brief because you guys know if I have an hour drive into the office or something like that, I could talk for an hour easily with no notes. Anyway, the soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing. Doesn't say he has a little. Doesn't say he has almost enough. Has nothing. Think of all the potential that's wasted because of slothfulness. And let me be transparent with you. I've walked with God now for more than 30 years. And one of the things I pray often is, Lord, please give me the years the canker worm is stolen. Because I know that I know more than I've lived to. So if my knowledge, my knowledge of God and the things of God, I'll put up here, right? You can't see. But my what I live is way down here below the screen. And so I'm continually saying, God, give me more time. Let me live longer so I could redeem some of that time wasted. Right? God promised he would give you the years the canker worm has stolen. So when you hear me speak, don't conclude that I am perfect. I have it all together. Somehow I've arrived and I have some wings in the back and I fly like an angel. Nope. Sometimes I share with you what I myself am developing and diligence is one of those things that I've been praying daily. Lord, help me to be more diligent. I want to finish what I start. I want to, right? I want to do more and more of that. All right, so you're right, Susan. Stop making excuses for yourself and do something. That's a good, that's a good slogan, right? Nike said, just do it. Another good slogan is do something, exclamation point. That's awesome. You guys have a great day. I hope you found something helpful. Share these videos. There's a lot of negative stuff all over social media, right? I get calls and texts from people that are frustrated and not sure what to do, thinking of unplugging from social media, and I refuse to do it. I say, listen, we need to be salt and light. And so I, that's the only reason I do Daily Nuggets of Wisdom. Trust me, I have a lot of better things I could do with my time. But I try to provide an alternative to much of the negative stuff that you and I are exposed to on Facebook and every other social media platform. I'm beginning, I'm not beginning. I actually think social media now and, and its influence is worse than the mass media. All right, you guys have a good day. Share, like, comment if you have a question, leave it. I have a tendency to, to respond to everything, maybe not in real time, but at some point I go through it. All right, God bless you guys.